Oh, it's recording. I think we're good. I think we're good. Are we recording? Okay. 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 We're we're definitely good. Oh, I need the. Okay, never mind. They're there. Okay. Okay. So we're a little bit behind the schedule. Jim is behind the schedule, so I'm gonna have to really uh, speed through this. Luckily, this is just an intro, but I say that my intro still go longer than expected. I'm still in the Declaration of Independence. There we go. All right. So uh, kind of gonna be introing a little bit today. Uh, gonna plan on loosely tying this into uh, the, the rest of what we talk about for the rest of the month. We're gonna be talking about root and fruit. I just think it's funny to say it like that. Root and fruit. We'll see, we'll see that. Root and fruit. Oh, you missed the goat video from camp. Uh, Joey did a Norwegian uh, accent like over his goat video. What is it, Hector? I am Hector, the goat. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was no, funny. Frozen. No, you can do that it was funny. A little bit too well. Yeah, I've had practice. Yeah, we've had practice. We'll do okay. Thank you for that one. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what are we talking about? Root and fruit. Root and fruit. It's just funny to say. Uh, I, I was thinking I should probably come up with a better like, title for it, but it's just so much fun to say root and fruit. Okay. So, we're going to be talking about root and fruit. Uh, talking about how, you know, uh, if you see the fruit of something, then you can trace it back to the root. And uh, it's really important that we don't deal with just the, the fruit issues, but we trace it back and deal with the root issues if we're really going to deal with the things in our lives. Yeah. Um, did everybody have a good time at camp? Yes! Yeah. 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 Everybody have... really getting a lot of time. Well, the services I, were awesome. I think awesome. we had the best time. Because... Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Well, the we're always on a winning team. Then. You always have yeah. the best time. Yeah, yeah. I'll always walk Services were great, but uh, I won two years. I thought it was way better for all, but it didn't work out. Yeah. That was more dangerous than I thought it was going to be because I was in the hell the road from the back of the long work. Good for you. Okay, so let us start with the definition. Right, John? You know what the definition of root is? I do. You know what the root word for root is? I should have looked that up. I do. I should have looked for the root word of root. Liam, that was the best thing. Oot. Oot. I know it. Okay, no. The, the definition is so. Like, like, you know, in the brackets before it really gets to the definition, kind of like breaks down the word. This is what it says. It says, a root is a shoot. <laughs> a root is a shoot. And blah, 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 blah. Okay, first definition of root is a part of the plant which enters and fixes itself in the earth and serves as a support for the plant. That makes sense, right? Uh, the fifth definition that I think is applicable for what we're going to be talking about is the origin, the original or cause of anything, right? So my first one, I, I'm kind of a visual person, so I like I like to be able to see things visually. So I'm going to draw a picture of a, a tree. Ta-da! It is a tree. And here's the, the tree part. I'm kidding. Here's the tree part. Here's a branch. And then here's the. Silly the entire time. So, it kind of has to be said 
that a fruit is the visual, like in process, of a hidden process, right? The roots are underground, the roots are hidden, you don't see them, right? But the roots are going on, and the roots are what is feeding what is visible, right? And so, obviously we're talking metaphorically here with the tree and whatnot, because, you know, uh, what we're really talking about is you, all of us, right? We are like trees. We are the large garden. So, in your life, the fruit of your life, right, the, the things that are evident in your life, your behavior, your actions, your, your, your thinking, your, your acting, your moving, your, your life, your living, the things that you do and how you behave, those are fruit, right? But they all come from a hidden root in your life, right? Let's look at Galatians 5, 22 through 23, right quick. Yeah. Galatians 5, 22 through 23, this is what is called the fruits of the Spirit, right? And the fruits, these are the fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> All right, so it says, For the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all of its various expressions, joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. So, the root of the Holy Spirit connected with your spirit, and you yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit, the, the root of that produces the fruit of the Spirit, you know, which in you know, New King James is Love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness. I think that's about all of them, right? Yeah, I get through like half of it, and it's like counting in Spanish. You get like halfway there and go, Reve, Ocho, Shaka, and Gi. I just kind of lose it. I can do it in Japan, in Japanese, but I forgot how to do it in Spanish. Hang the one, Gagagi! That's my favorite. Nine, no, nine, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now let's go up a couple of verses ahead, and uh, let's read Galatians five nineteen through twenty one. Galatians five nineteen through twenty one. This is literally just the verses right above it. These are uh, a lot of translations say the works of the flesh, but you could say the fruit of the flesh, the fruit that the flesh uh, you yielding to the flesh produces in your life. I'm not going to read in the message. If you want a uh, real eye opener, read in the message and apply that to your life and those around you. It's scary. But this, the passion translation isn't quite as bad as the message. It's still disgusting. The cravings of the self life are obvious. It's obvious. Oh, Joseph, you don't get that joke, do you? No. I told you the rhino story? <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's obvious. Okay. <laughs> the cravings of the self life are obvious. For you, basically. Sexual immorality, uh, lustful thoughts, <laughs> pornography, chasing after things instead of God, manipulating others, hatred to those who uh, hatred to those who get in your way, senseless arguments, uh, resentment when others are favored, temper tantrums, angry quarrels, quarrels, not squirrels, <laughs> angry squirrels. Oh man, I'm in the flesh right now. Oh no, the angry squirrels! That should be a great, uh, that should be a skit, like a skit without knowledge skit, so he like reads it wrong. Angry squirrel. You're in the flesh! Angry squirrel! Angry quarrels. Only thinking of yourself, being in love with your own opinions, being envious of the blessings of others, murder, uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and all other similar behavior. So, the fruits that is produced by a root of you yielding to the flesh, or you yielding to getting your own ways, or you yielding to your animalistic nature without God, is angry squirrels. <laughs> Uh, and we have lost 
lost control. Okay, we got two minutes. We got this. Okay, so is everybody following along so far? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Root, okay, so rooted in the Holy Spirit, produce fruits of the Spirit. Rooted in yourself and your flesh, fruits of the flesh, right? So the hidden root of your life will produce fruit in your life. So the whole list of love, joy, peace, patience, that is all stuff you can see that is behavioral, that is you acting out. Some based on a root in your heart of being yielded to the Holy Spirit. Now the, you know, lustful thought, pornography, chasing after things, instead of God, manipulating others, hatred to those who get to the way, senseless arguments, relentless anger squirrels, you know, murder, uncontrolled <laughs> addictions, well, murder, all of that kind of stuff. That is murder. And then he keeps going. Hey, go on, can I go to Okay, that is the fruit. <laughs> all right, is one back there? Another one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we got. Uh... <laughs> okay, you're fine. No, you don't. You're you're you are not you stop. You stop and go, you know, murder, and then you continue down the ramble. <laughs> you should do it often. Oh, yeah, watch out. That the murder demands attention. Okay. So too often, too too often the problem that we have, um, and uh, for any of you who uh, aspire to leadership, any of you who come to discipleship, uh, one thing that's very important for leadership and just in life in general, uh, you know, being a, a believer and uh, having a, your life goal of trying to help people is... A lot of times we kind of deal with the fruit, right? We see somebody, they've got some bad fruit, right? Maybe they, they have something on the list of the flesh here that is bad fruit. We see it, why? Because it's obvious, right? Like, like the Bible says, it's obvious. So you see it, you see the bad fruit, like your tree has an angry squirrel. That's bad fruit. That's you got, you got, you got a healthy tree, you want to get angry squirrels. So we... So you see the fruit, and you want to deal with the fruit, right? You go, hey, listen, you shouldn't have that fruit. You need to stop having that fruit. You need to just cut that fruit out of your life. You don't need that kind of negativity. So we want to focus on the fruit, and we want to we want to attack people based on the fruit. But you know what happens? You know what happens if you, if you lob off that fruit? You know what's going to happen, right? It's going to come back. Because... Trees grow fruit, right? So if you lob up the fruit, it, oh, fruit trees. <laughs> trees that bear fruit, and fruit isn't always actual fruit, like flowers are fruit, basically just seeds, right? Yeah, trees the seed yeah. is the fruit, the fruit just holds the seed, right? So if you, if you lob it up, it's going to come back, right? So too often we try to deal with the, the fruit problem without dealing with the root problem. What, what happens if you take the entire tree out? It's not going to, it ain't nothing going to grow back, right? It's gone. But you just cut off the fruit, that fruit's going to come back, right? Uh, you know, so this happens way too often that uh, we just deal with the fruit. Because one, that's a lot easier, right? It's a lot easier to see bad fruit. Because why? It's obvious. And it's a lot, it's a lot easier to deal with that. You say, oh, look, there's some bad fruit in your life. It is obvious. Hey, you need to stop. Yeah. Problem solved. I can go on my way feeling so much better about myself. While they're dealing with the fact that they're having a hard time dealing with this bad fruit. And they try to get rid of it. And a month later, they're back at it. Like, you know, especially here, those of you who are at camp. Maybe, you know, you're dealing with some bad fruit in your life. You went to camp. You got set free from it, right? And maybe you're somebody who's gone to camp a lot. Like, like I used to, right? Uh, I got some stuff I'm dealing with, some stuff I'm trying to change in my life, some stuff I'm trying to drop in my life because I know it's not good. I go to camp, I get set free, and then a couple weeks later I'm hanging out with my friends, and guess what? I'm back at it again. I'm doing the exact same thing. The bad fruit has regrown in my life. Right? Huh? We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting to the school shooting. This is next on my list. Actually, it literally is. The next point. Okay, so moving on to mass shootings. Thank you. So, mass shootings happen. That's some bad fruit. What do we do? We take away the guns. Are guns the root of mass violence? You never really take away guns. Yeah, no. Guns are not the root of mass violence. There are plenty of stabbings, like just a couple months ago, there was a mass stabbing at a bus stop in Japan. There are mass stabbings all over the place in Paris and other European countries right now. It's happening all the time. They took away all the guns. In Japan and in a lot of European countries, they have very strict gun policies, like literally no guns. And there's still lots and lots of violence going on, like mass stabbings. Like, I think in Japan a couple months ago, it was like 
Uh, I think 17 people were wounded, two, uh, two dead. And a mass stabbing at a bus stop. That's like stuff people Yeah, right? I mean, what? How, how, did, how did Cain kill Abel? To pick up a rock. The problem is people have violence in their heart, right? People have an unrenewed flesh, or people who are born again, they don't have the love of God shed abroad in their heart by the Holy Spirit. And so all they have by default is their flesh, which as we just read, the fruit of the, the fruit of the flesh is one of them was literally murder. So no surprise, right? Guns, uh, guns and weapons aren't the root problem of uh, violence. Hatred and animosity in people's hearts is the root that spurs people to violence. What about racism? We're trying to stop racism. How do we stop racism? Well, we've got to throw everybody together and then they'll get along. Okay, that's not working. We gotta separate everybody, and then they'll get along. Also, it doesn't work. So, how do we stop racism? What is the root of racism? Yep, yeah, it's the idea. It's, it's the the ideas in people's hearts and minds that uh, that uh, are contrary to the true identity. And uh, you know, our true identities are that in Christ, all race melts away. Yeah. You know, the, the Bible says that in Christ there is no. Jew or Greek, which Jew and Greek, literally whenever they're talking about Greek in the Bible, they're literally just talking about the rest of the world, because at that point everybody else was Greeks. The Jews and the Greeks. That's the world, right? And so, you know, there, there are no more distinctions. Even male and female, there's no more distinctions. All the, you know, the the, 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 the sexism and whatnot. How do you deal with that? Same way. It's the, the root is that people have misinformation on our true identities, right? And so the, uh, how do you solve the, how do you deal with uh, the root? Um, well, how do you deal with the fruit is first by dealing with the root. You have to figure out what the root is that is causing the bad fruit. And then you have to deal with the root. Because um, if, you, if you just deal with the fruit, the fruit will return. Yeah. You know, we, we've been trying to deal with violence and, and racism and <coughs> hatred and all that kind of stuff and murder. We've been trying to deal with that literally since Cain killed Abel. And we haven't gotten any better. Why? Because we keep trying to deal with the fruit. We keep trying to stop the fruit, but we never deal with the root, which is the heart of man, right? Now, back when I was a, a kid and a young teenager, I had a lot of warts on my hands. They were nasty and annoying. I had like one like, like, well, like right, right here, and it made it really hard to tie water balloons, uh, which was really annoying back then. But I had like warts like all over my fingers. It was really annoying. And uh, uh, I would try to find different ways to get them cut off and whatnot. Like a couple of times I accidentally like had them get ripped off and it hurt really bad. I was like, well, hey, that that was not fun and now I'm bleeding. But at least now I don't have a wart there. And then, it, yeah, yeah, anybody who's, who's had a wart and had that happen, what happens after the you know, couple weeks and whatnot? It's back. Right? It is back with a vengeance. So, what I did is I ended up getting these uh, cool little like acid band-aids and like band-aids with like this little acid gel in it and I'd wrap it on there and then burn it away and then I'd, I'd scrape it away, put it on, scrape it away and eventually it got all the way down to where you could see the root. And then I'd keep putting the acid band-aid on there and I think eventually I had this little acid drop, yeah I burned it. But after, after a while I literally burnt out the root and I don't have any warts in it. Because I went to every single wart and I burnt it down all the way to the root, and then I I had burnt the root and dissolved it away. The only way, and it's the same thing in our lives, right? Uh, you know, so sending our lives with the fruit in our lives, the good fruit comes from good root. Bad fruit comes from bad roots, and bad fruit in your life, you have to take it out by the root. So often we want to just like kind of pick and choose, right? Like say you got a say say you got a whole bunch of little branches here, right? You got, you know, got some, there's a whole bunch of branches, you got one with an angry squirrel on it, and uh, so, you know, maybe you got some, you got your depression fruit, you got your, your lust fruit, that's nasty, uh, well, you got your, your, uh, your anger fruit right above the angry squirrel, that's why it's so angry, because it can't reach it, well, you got your, uh, well, you got your, your, uh, your yelling at your parents fruit, you know, you got, you, got, you got all these bad fruits, right? And you're like, okay, you know what? I, I really need to get rid of the, the, the depression fruit. I don't like that one. Um, I like being angry at my parents, but I don't like being angry in 
general, so I'll get rid of that one. Okay, problem solved. My life is perfect. But the roots are still here. The, the depression root is still here, so that leads to, oh, bummer, more depression fruit. The, uh, the just constantly being angry fruit is still here. Boop, guess what we'll popped back up? Bummer, dude. Anger, anger. Yeah, you have to <laughs> cut it out and even just cut the tree down. You're like, okay, fine, I'm gonna get rid of all of it. I'm just gonna go to camp, I'm gonna get set free from all of it. Woo! The tree's down, I win. But you still got the root and the stuff. Guess what? Eventually, you have to boop, it's gonna poke back up and it's gonna, it's gonna grow back, right? Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta kill it at the root. Back. Yeah, well, I mean, if we're being real honest, I mean, I wasn't planning on talking about that, but if we're being real honest with it, it'll probably grow back worse than it was before. Because, you know, one thing I tell people, uh, you know, in, in Go and whatnot, uh, is, you know, uh, sometimes people come to Go and they expect, like, all of their problems to get solved. And then, uh, or basically just anybody, you know, works things out in faith. If, uh, you know, things don't work out for you, and uh, it doesn't work out like you planned. Like you tried it, and it didn't work like you wanted. You're probably going to be less likely to try it again. So you cut down the tree, you get rid of all your fruit, and then it pops back up. You're probably not going to try to get rid of the fruit again. Because it didn't work last time. So you're probably just never even going to try it. So you're worse off than you were before. And that's where a lot of people end up, and that's where a lot of people get so frustrated. What kind of fruit do you want in your life? Okay, so yeah, so what? So what kind of what, what kind of fruit do you guys do you guys want? You there's a fly buzzing around my head. It's not a circle fly. Okay, so so get away from me. Okay, so it's on you. Oh no. Okay, so so what what kind of fruit do you want in your life? Chunk of fruit. Well, joy does, or uh, laughter does go like a medicine, so that's good. Kind of fruit you want. Good fruit, right? That's basic psychology. Yeah. Living fruit. Living fruit. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, so Jesus' fruit, that, that'll work. Bananas. Bananas. <laughs> High in potassium, Evil. so Evil. health Evil. fruit. Apples, but without the caterpillars. Okay, that's just silly. Stop. <laughs> I don't want caterpillars in my apples. Success fruit, nice. Water fruit. Public speaking fruit, right. <laughs> okay, so basically the consensus, the, the consensus here goes right along with basic psychology that everybody wants good things for themselves, right? Everybody wants a positive future. Everybody wants good, positive, productive fruit, right? Like the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants to love people. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to have people lean on them. Everybody wants to have, everybody wants to have joy. Everybody wants to have peace. Everybody wants to be able to put up with people without having to kill them. You probably prefer it, you know, because jail's not fun. You don't know that. That's my uncle. I've known people. I've visited people before. Uh, well, you know, what's, you know what's interesting about you wanting all that good fruit? You only get the good fruit if you first have the good roots. Right. So that's, a, that's another thing that uh, you, you guys' generation kind of been uh, sold a bill of goods here that just aren't good, is kind of this idea that if you just dream, if you just really, really want something, then just the, the force of you wanting it will bring it to you. Yeah. That's not the case. If you want something, you first have to trace it back to how do you get it? Right. And you have to put in the work to get it. Luckily, God has already done all the hard work. All you have to do is receive God. The Holy Spirit is in you. Then all you have to do is yield to him. One thing that helps with that is, one, if you know his word, and if you have a relationship with him, like in prayer, right? right. But it's super easy. Now, what are some fruit that you would want out of your life? Anybody brave enough to say it's the, the devil? You have some devil fruit we have a meeting later. <laughs> if you literally have, if you have the devil coming out of you, then we'll, we'll, we'll have an action in place. I just want to be toxic friends. Okay, I don't know if that's yeah, what it, a, a fruit or I don't know. That's, that's, that's just bad. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 
don't know. Would you consider bad friends? For, could, could people be fruit in your you life? You consider bad friends friends. Depends on if you use well, it or like not. That's, I think it's a relationship. Yeah, maybe that's just bad soil. I don't know. But, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. I'll have to think about that. I'll have to think about it. Anybody else brave enough to say some bad fruit that they, they don't want? Procrastination? Dude, tell me about it. Drama. Huh? Drama. Drama? Yeah, like you created drama and having drama all around you, definitely. Huh? I just want to be less murderous. Less murderous? Yeah, that'll allow you to win. You got a reason. Sean, you got anything? No? Okay. She's going to ride it on yourself. Here's the bad food out of it. Maybe eating poisoning? Okay. Okay. Well, for you to get rid of the bad fruit, like I was saying, you have to take it out by the root. Um, yeah, we don't really have time for any of that. Some of these verses are good. They just had a whole bunch of verses about it. About roots and fruits. Oh wow! Oh wow! I got that too. Oh wow! Okay, I'm gonna read through this really, really quick. First uh, Timothy, First Timothy six ten. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Uh, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I spit a little. James 1, 15. <laughs> then the evil desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully matured, brings forth death. So the root of death, sin. The root of sin, evil desires, right? So, following the progression here. Uh, Proverbs 26, 23 through 28. I thought this was interesting. I've never read this in passion, or passion before. Smooth talk can hide a corrupt heart, just like a pretty gaze covers uh, the cheap clay pot. A kind word can be a cover to conceal hatred of others. For hypocrisy loves to hide behind flattery, so don't be drawn in by the hypocrite. For its gracious speech is a charade, nothing but a masquerade covering his hatred and evil on parade. Oh, that's not a cool, uh, cool song name, Evil on Parade. Don't worry, uh, he can't keep the mask on for long. One day his hypocrisy will be exposed before all the world. Go ahead, set the trap for others, and then watch as it snaps back on you. Start a landslide and you'll be the one who gets crushed. Hatred is a root of slander, and insecurity the root of flattery. Uh, Hebrews 12, 15. Watch out, watch over each other to make sure that no one misses the revelation of God's grace, and make sure no one lives with the root of bitterness sprouting within them, which only causes trouble and poisons the hearts of many. So here, you know, there's just some scriptures talking about uh, 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 some roots, right? So there are specific roots, things that are, are root problems that you can have in your life that will produce multiple fruits, right? Because the thing about a tree is there is one tree, and it sends its roots out, but a one tree can bear multiple fruits. So you could have one big problem, one big unseen root issue that can produce many issues, like depression. Depression is just one fruit, uh, can, can, can be one fruit of, uh, and have many other things attached to it, but it can all be traced back to, to one real big issue, right? A lot of these issues uh, can all be traced back to one big issue. Pride is one of those things. Pride is one of those roots that can branch off and do a lot of different bad fruits in your life. And uh, it's very important that you watch out for what kind of things get rooted in your heart. And this is kind of what we're going to be talking about uh, as we move forward. Proverbs 4.23. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance, and above all that you guard, for out of it flows the springs of life. Other translation says the issues of life, right? So it's important that you guard what kind of things get rooted in your heart, right? Because uh, it's up to each and every one of us to be the guard of our heart. Now, obviously, the Holy Spirit can help with that, but it's... You know, you're the one who opens and shuts the door of your heart. The things that you let in, the things that you keep out, that's up to you, right? Uh, we don't have time for all of this. So the next part uh, is mainly just talking about being rooted in Christ. Uh, we don't have time for all of those verses. I'll just read the last one. John 15, 1 through 11. I am the true sprouting, so this is Jesus talking, right, about being rooted in your heart. I am the true sprouting vine. And the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He who cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruit of his branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. 
The words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you, so you must remain in life union with me. If, uh, for I remain in life union with you, for as the branch uh, severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. I am the sprouting vine, and you are my branches. As you live in union with me, as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. And when you live separated from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire, and it will be done. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciple, who glorify my Father. I love each of you with the same love that the Father loved me. You must continually let my love nourish your hearts. If you keep my commandments, uh, you will live in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands. For I, have continually for I live continually nourished and empowered by his love. My purpose for telling you these things is that the joy that I experience will fill your hearts with overflowing gladness. Uh, now, there's a whole bunch of other verses. Uh, if you want them, you can get them from me that I skipped over. But it's really, really important that, uh, one, you recognize that the negative fruits in your life all have a root. And it's more important that you deal with the root issue than you just constantly try to deal with the fruit issue. And uh, as we go out throughout this month, we're going to talk about some specific things that are root problems. To help you better identify what are the root problems instead of just trying to deal with, you know, uh, some of the, the fruit that come from it. Also, understanding that the fruit of the Spirit, also or the, the, the fruit of the Spirit is produced by your union with the Holy Spirit. And so it's super, super important that you do not neglect... Uh, being rooted in Christ. You are the doorkeeper for your heart. It's important that you keep out the roots of the flesh, you keep out the roots that produce negative things, that you keep out pride and selfishness and bitterness and all of these things and all the, the fleshly things that produce negative fruit, right? Uh, like the Bible says, it's obvious, right? It's not like it's going to sneak up on you like, oh, like, oh, dang, like, pride done snuck up on me and now I have all these negative fruit. Like, it's obvious, right? And, uh, you know, the, the, Lord, the Lord's ways are pretty obvious too, right? Uh, and if you have any questions, it's in the Bible. Go read through Ephesians and whatnot. It's obvious, right? So it's important that as the gatekeeper of your heart, that you are keeping vigilance, right, over what you allow to take root in your heart. Um, so as we go forward uh, in, this, uh, in this month, we'll talk about some of those things more specifically. But it's uh, just really important uh, that, you know, we don't focus too heavily on the, the fruit issues, but only that, you know, you recognize the fruit and you trace it back to a root issue and then you get help with that. Um, you know, uh, whether you pray about it, you talk with God about it, you also get, you know, help from others. Go talk to your parents and talk to me and whatnot. Talk to your, your good spiritual friends and whatnot. But that you get the, the root issues out of your life, out of your heart. So that you can be set free from uh, the negative fruit. Yeah. Uh, anybody got any questions about any of that? It's kind of just an intro uh, into a basic principle, kind of leading off with uh, some of the fundamentals. We're kind of planning on moving, uh, if it works out, moving into some basic life fundamentals for uh, just living your best life. Uh, yeah. So, uh, awesome. Any questions about any of that? Fall in. All right. Let us pray. Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and we just thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that uh, our hearts are good soil. Uh, we welcome the word into our hearts, Father. We uh, take it and we apply it. Uh, we meditate on it so that your word can be rooted in our hearts, Lord, that uh, it wouldn't be snatched away or wither up, Father, but uh, it would bear fruit in our lives, Lord, that uh, we would bear the fruit of being your disciples, of having you in our hearts, Lord. And uh, we just thank you for everything you've done for us and everything that you have planned. And we just plead the blood of Jesus Christ for each and every one of us that we would continue to walk in your coming blessing and your coming protection. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Well, what?
Dude, okay, so yeah, yesterday I was uh, I was mowing for like all 